Hey everybody, Jake here, and today I'm going to teach you how to use a fountain pen. This is for people who either have a fountain pen and aren't sure what to do next, or want to get a fountain pen and don't know what to do next, or if you're wondering what in the heck is a fountain pen. It's an older pen that was used before ball points and roller balls are still around, and some people, like me, actually prefer them. A fountain pen is essentially a controlled leak, um, thanks to Richard Bender, that goes from the converter through the section, through the feed, and then through the nib onto the paper. To do this, you need a couple things. Um, you basically, though, you're taking the ink and you're slapping it down on the page with as little pressure as possible while writing. It's crucial, you don't want to damage these things. Pretty simplistic stuff, though. So, a few parts to your fountain pen. There's going to be the cap, there's going to be the section that has the nib at the end, and then, of course, there's going to be the body. This kind of covers up your cartridge or converter to keep it from being damaged or knocked loose, anything like that. It makes it look more like a standard pen as well. So to get started, you're going to need a paper, a pen, a converter, and an ink bottle. If you're going to be using bottled ink, if you just want to use a cartridge, you need paper, a pen, and your ink cartridge. Pretty simple, right? So with a converter pen, what you want to do is take off the cap, unscrew the body, and then take your converter and slot it into the section. Most of them you'll feel a little click. This particular model has two little nodules that you have to slot in. Most of them don't have that and they just fit right in. Some of them are universal, some are not, so make sure to do a little research ahead of time. To fill a converter pen, you want to take your bottle of ink, unscrew the lid, then grab your pen. Uncap it, unscrew the body, and make sure that your converter piston is pushed all the way down that's ready to suck up that ink. Go ahead and submerge your pen. The nib needs to go all the way in the ink and even a little bit of the section and you can go ahead and start twisting the piston in the opposite direction from which you twisted it down. This will suck up the ink, and once you wipe off that little bit of excess on the nib, you're ready to write. Or with a cartridge, it's gonna be a little different. So you're gonna grab your pen, uncap it, unscrew the body, and then all you have to do at this point is take your cartridge and press it in until you feel a little click. Once you feel that click, you're good to go. It is going to take a minute or two for the ink to get down to the nib, but that's about it. Screw back on your body, put your cap back on, and you're good to go. On to nib sizes. So the most common starter nib size is going to be a fine. They do have one smaller than this extra fine, but it's a little scratchy. The fines are going to be a bit more scratchy or feedbacky, depending on how you say it, but they're going to put out a thinner line. Mediums are going to be a little bit smoother and put out a, as I said, medium width line. Um, this is usually what I default to unless I can get the nib in abroad. This puts out a very wide line and is extremely smooth in most cases. This is probably my favorite nib, and it's great if you have really large handwriting or if you have room to write large. If you have smaller handwriting, maybe go with a fine or extra fine. That's all your basic parts, how you fill it and how you write with it, things like that. Again, apply very little pressure when you're writing and make a mess. It's going to happen. It's fine. There are a few drawbacks, such as expense and things like that, but if you're looking into this topic, you probably already know that already. I'll leave some, like I said, list some videos linked down in the description that may help you out. Some of mine and some of other people's that have helped me out getting started in the hobby. Make sure to pick a pen and ink that you like, though. A lot of people go for black ink to start off with. I actually started with the ink you saw in this video, the Lamy Turquoise. It's fantastic, beautiful ink, but there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of ink colors. So take your time, figure out what you like, and go for it. Thanks, guys. Bye.